Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a mini PC in for review by Geekom. The awesome folks over at Geekom have sent me over one of their latest models. This is the A5 2025 edition and today we're going to be taking a look at the unit itself, having a look at the specifications and then finally seeing just how well it actually performs. When it comes to mini PCs, there are plenty of options available on the market currently in what is quickly becoming a very popular solution for space saving efforts. The one we have here is no different and has some pretty impressive specs to boot for its price point. So first things first, before we dive in, let's brief over some important key details. Then we can take a more comprehensive look afterwards. The Geekom A5 2025 edition is the latest variant of the A5 range of mini PCs. They offer lots of different models from lower price options for ideal for home office systems all the way up to rather impressively spec higher end systems that I'd eventually like to get my hands on to review for the channel too. The A5 2025 edition slots itself nicely in the middle of all those offerings and is available for a pretty reasonable price range of around £300. This is for the 7430U version that we have, meaning it's a very affordable option that is catered to a variety of users from home office professionals and casual gamers. With that out of the way, let's get to business. In the usual Gadget Joe style, we're going to take a look at the box. So the box is nice and compact in all black with minimalist line work images of the device on the sides and a simple image of a PC on the top. The only information on the entire box is on the underside with this little sticker in the top left. Opening the box, you get the unit itself, nicely presented in a little foam sheet for protection. Next, you get a little envelope saying thank you, a nice little premium touch. Underneath a little cardboard tray is a user manual, the power brick itself and a kettle lead, a bag of screws for mounting, a HDMI cable, and then finally a VESA mounting bracket for mounting the unit to the back of your monitor. The unit itself is very compact. It literally fits in the power of my hand and is a little bit bigger than my closed fist. In fact, it only comes in at just 117 by 112 and 49.2 millimeters tall. It weighs 652 grams and it's surprisingly weighty for its size thanks to its aluminium frame, which coincidentally gives it a bit more of a premium feel to it compared to the usual plastic cases of mini pieces on the market. It looks really nice as well. It's got a really slight rose gold, almost pinky color to it with some nice little designs on the ventilation panels on the sides, which brings me on nicely to the IO of the device. And surprisingly, we are given a pretty decent amount of connectivity. On the front are two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type A's with a first supporting power delivery, audio jack and power switch. On the sides are an air ventilation grill with a Kensington lock on one side and an SD card reader on the opposite side. At the rear, it's very busy with a 19 volt power port, two HDMI 2 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type C power delivery ports, a 2.5 gigabit RJ45 Ethernet, and finally one USB 2 and one USB 3.2 Type-A ports. When it comes to connecting it to a display, it can technically run up to two 4K displays at 60 Hz thanks to the dual HDMI ports, but you can also connect two displays via the USB-C ports too via a mode called DPA or DisplayPort Alternate with support for up to 8K 30 Hz. The only downside to running an 8K display is that you're going to be really pushing the limits of that inbuilt graphic chip and you will likely encounter some issues. So for the sake of smooth operation, I would generally follow the rule of dual 4K displays or four 1080p displays to get the very best results out of the little PC. Now let's take a look at what's powering the unit. There are two different variations available of the Geekom A5 2025 edition. The one we have features an AMD Ryzen 5 7430U processor a 6-core 12-thread chip running at 2.3 GHz base and 4.3 GHz boost clock speed with built-in Radeon Vega RX7 graphics, 16 gigabits of 3200 MHz DDR4 RAM and a 512 GB NVMe SSD. The other variant features a Ryzen 7 5825U 8-core 16-thread running at 2 GHz boosting up to 4.5 GHz and inbuilt Radeon Vega RX8 inbuilt graphics and the same RAM and SSD configuration. The RAM and SSD are configurable and upgradable too by removing the screws found inside the rubber feet to remove the base plate to expose the internals. On the base plate itself is a mount for a 2.5 inch SSD or hard drive for additional storage up to 2 terabytes. The RAM can be upgraded via these dual sodium DDR4 slots for up to 64GB of RAM. On the other side is the included 512GB NVMe drive. 
This is a full-size 2280 socket. There is an additional NVMe socket next to it with support for up to two terabyte once again. This one, however, is limited to a 2242 smaller drive. So with all the unboxing and specs out of the way, it begs the question, what is the purpose of a Geekom A5 2025 edition PC? What's it used for? Well, it's primarily aimed at more professional office-based tasks, emails, web browsing, office work, Word, Excel, Publisher, etc., file sharing, and so much more. But it's also a fantastic streaming machine too. 4K video playback is fantastic, especially with the ability to run dual 4K screens. It'll happily play a 4K YouTube video on one display while you're hard at work on the other. It'll also handle photo editing with relative ease too, so it would be great for someone in the marketing industry or those who run Instagram accounts. Video editing is something to avoid, however. It likely will allow you to edit videos on it, but it's not gonna be very pleasant. But then they have models designed for that very reason in their range too. Gaming is actually possible thanks to that inbuilt Radeon Vega RX 7 graphics chip. It's not gonna play top tier games and demanding games, but then that's not what it's made for. It will, however, play Fortnite and Minecraft on low to medium settings, which is pretty impressive considering what you get. It is, however, an amazing emulation machine. It'll run your favorite emulators really, really well, and I've managed to get it to play more demanding titles from PS2, N64, Xbox, and even Switch games without any hiccups, making it an amazing little emulation machine. Now, when it comes to emulation, I have to stress, for the sake of emulation laws, that you should only ever play titles that you already own. But if, like me, you already have them, then it's no issue at all and you're gonna really enjoy them on a unit like this. Pair the PC with a controller and you have a fantastic little device for you or the whole family to enjoy on your main TV. I ran Cinebench on it to see just how well it performs and it scored 6,006 points on the multi-core CPU test, which actually puts it nice and firmly in comparison to the likes of a lot of the slightly older i7 units as you can see here. And that pretty much sums up my unboxing and review of the Geekom A5 2025 edition mini PC. And it brings me to the conclusion part of the video. What do I like about it or what do I not like about it? And would I recommend it to you? First of all, I'm gonna get the negatives out of the way. And you'll be pleased to know that they are incredibly minimal. The biggest one has to be the color. And even then it's not really a negative. It's just that it would be nice to see it available in different color options. This thing would look incredible in white with chrome around the top or black to make it more discreet in the office or mounted on the rear of your monitor. Rose gold does look great, don't get me wrong, and it definitely looks very nice, but it almost gives it a slightly feminine feel into it, which again isn't an issue, but other little customization options would be great to see. And that's pretty much it for the negatives. Again, not really a negative, but when I sat down and really thought about it all, and what you're getting for just £300, it's an incredibly compelling little option and there's not many negatives to think about. The build quality is fantastic. The metal frame feels much more substantial and can only aid in the cooling of a unit, which is also a great point. It has a blower along the top that pushes the hot air out of the rear and even when gaming, it barely made a sound and it kept it nice and cool. The ability to open it up easily and upgrade your RAM or storage is a great touch and an easy one to do at that. I've worked with systems before that you could upgrade the storage on, but you had to replace your main boot drive and then reinstall Windows. This one has an additional NVMe slot and an extra SATA connector into the base without compromising on space. The connectivity is really impressive with USB type A's and C's all over the place and they're not just standard run-of-the-mill type A slow ports either. They're Gen 3.2, 5, 10, and 20 gigabit ports too. 2.5 gig ethernet for super fast internet connectivity via hardline, or even Wi-Fi 6 for fast Wi-Fi. Bluetooth connectivity and dual HDMI ports, and then the SD card slot, which for someone like me is a godsend. In fact, this system is going to be taking permanent residency in my studio as a camera script media device to keep all my cameras teleprompters and studio working together and running. It comes included with Windows 11 Pro right out of a box too, which is not a cheap operating system. It's crazy that this thing has that included for the price point again. That Ryzen 7430U is a very capable little chipset. Yeah, it's not gonna be amazing in terms of gaming, but for everything else, it smashes it out of a pack. 
It handles multitasking with ease. Office programs are effortless. Media playback looks good and sounds great and barely touches the CPU utilization. The inbuilt Vega RX 7 graphics makes playing emulated games titles effortless too. Again, avoid looking to play big titles and more intensive games if you're wanting a gaming machine that will play games like COD, CSGO, WWE, Baldur's Gate and such, then avoid this like the plague. But for everything else that I threw at it, it worked flawlessly. The tiny size is great. I've got it sat right beside my studio TV. Well, I do when it's not here for the video, of course. But it'll fit in most places, and what's more is that it only needs 65 watts of power to run. So it'll run without making an impact on your electricity bill too. You could even stick it in your bag and take it travelling with you to work or a family member's house so that you still have your own system to work on whilst away. So, a mightily impressive little mini PC by Geekom. I know there are comments to be made about mini PCs nowadays, but you have to take into consideration pricing and function. You simply could not build a full-sized, fully functioning PC with these sort of specs for anywhere near this price point with an operating system too. The mini PC market is fast getting flooded right now and there's good reason for that. Geekom seem to be a name that pop up quite often and when they agreed to work with me to review this unit, I wasn't too sure what to expect, but I'm very happy to admit that I was wrong to feel apprehensive in any way. It's a very capable little unit, ideal for a professional setting for a student, home worker, or even those who want a powerful little emulation system. It gets high praise from me, and I'm looking forward to getting my hands on some of their other offerings to see what else there is. It's definitely an easy recommendation, and as always, I will leave a link down below to where you can get your hands on one of the Geekom A5 2025 edition mini PCs in either spec. Whilst you're down there, don't forget to click like and subscribe for lots more like this, and let me know down in the comments below what you would use a little tiny PC like this for. And that's it from me for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.